Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Blog and School, and in this episode of the Automation Podcast, I sit down with Larry O'Brien from ARC Advisory Group to learn how his company helps end users as well as vendors with industrial automation. Larry, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come on the Automation Podcast to tell our audience all about ARC. And uh, before we jump into that, could you tell us uh, just a little bit about what your position is with ARC? So my position at ARC is vice president of research. Um, I don't know what that means, really. (laughs) I am currently right now on the cybersecurity team at ARC where we do research on OT level cybersecurity. Um, So we research the vendor side of the marketplace as well as the end user issues of the marketplace. And I'm also on the energy uh, critical infrastructure and smart cities team at ARC. Um, But just to give you a background, um, and energy is like renewables and central station power gen and critical infrastructure covers stuff like ports and, and you know, building automation and smart cities and transportation and all that stuff. Um, but for 25 years plus, I worked in process control and process safety. So uh, I started at the ARC in 1993 wow. as, a, uh, as an entry level market researcher, right? We were doing research on the pressure transmitter marketplace. That's where I started with pressure transmitters and temperature mm-hmm. transmitters. Um, and then I got into industrial networking like Hart and Foundation Field Bus and Profi Bus and stuff like that. Um, then I got into process safety, uh, safety life cycle management, uh, operator interface design, you know, the op- alarm management, situational awareness. Uh, and then we started a smart city practice at ARC um, about four years ago. Uh, so I, I transitioned to that team. Uh, so we're trying to take a closer look at what types of systems are being used in smart cities. And, and now we call it energy and critical infrastructure, uh, you know, since energy is such a big deal right now and renewables and, and so forth. And the whole the whole profile of the power grid is changing. But we'll, we can talk about that later. Uh, but that, that's, you know, me in brief. Uh, I come from process automation. Now I'm working in OT level cybersecurity, which certainly is not exclusive of process automation it's the biggest market for ot level cybersecurity right now i think and um and this critical infrastructure segment so that's me excellent now i i think i i said it in the pre-show and just for the sake of the audience you know we've had a lot of different uh, vendors on that you know sell make and sell hmis plcs vfds sensors mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff that you and i've worked with for the years and years and um, many of them make these claims that and, 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 and talk about research that's done. And, you know, I know that I was thinking there had to be somebody who who does that research and an expert in the field who finds out for these vendors. And I remember in mm-hmm. my years, I spent 25 years as a, as a specialist. And I remember during that time, your company's name, ARC or ARC, came up all the time as somebody that Rockwell would have re- do research for them and tell them how much market share they had. So that's why I reached out to you because it sounds like you guys get involved not in manufacturing industrial automation products, but in doing a lot of the research that helps the end users, whether they be vendors or somebody else. And I'm, I'm just looking at the screen here. Thank you for pulling up this slide. You can see, um, you know, you have a lot of end users as um uh, we do yeah as as your as your uh, clients so tell us if you could just for somebody who's brand new to arc what does arc do well like i said we started off as pretty much a pure play market research company back in 1986 right mm-hmm. um so we were doing reports on like i said I, I was doing pressure transmitters and temperature transmitters and level devices and you know we had people doing studies on single loop controllers and proximity sensors and plcs and you know so we've been doing this quantitative uh market research for a long time um and, and we built that up a really show? good database. Like, well, that shows things like market size and okay. market shares, you know, who has what share of the PLC market, for example. You mentioned Rockwell. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how are those, uh, who are the leaders in various geographic regions, right? Mm-hmm. What are the market shares by region, market shares uh, and market by industry? Um, a lot of studies, we do different segmentations. Uh you know, so for the DCS study, which was what I did for over 25 years, you know, we, we split it up by small, medium and large systems um, and, and different things like that. So we did all this work uh, in the early days and we still do it, you know, on the quantitative side. 
And as our understanding of the different products and offerings in the market expanded, uh, we started doing more work with end users because they were trying to figure out, you know, what are the trends in automation and and um, industrial manufacturing and what types of technologies should we be investing in? Um, you know, for me, again, speaking from my experience as a DCS analyst, uh, you know, what are the trends in DCS? What should we look for? Is this, uh, you know, we, this is back in the day when they were just starting to implement Ethernet, you know, in DCS. Is this really a trend or is this a fad and where is this going? You know, all the way up till today where we have, you know, uh, the influx of uh, industrial Internet of Things and cloud computing and edge computing. Um, so we we sort of expanded into this area of advising end users about their automation strategy and where are things headed um, and also more tactical stuff too, right? If I'm going to select a, an automation system, what are the different selection criteria I should be looking for in a supplier? You know, whether it's business level criteria, you know, is this supplier still going to be around in five years? You know, do they have a solid balance sheet to, you know, the technology side of things? You know, does this supplier support the latest technology trends? What's their roadmap? Are they going to guide me in the right direction? Um, all, all that kind of stuff. So so we've really expanded heavily into the end user space to where today, I think our business is pretty evenly split between, you know, the suppliers and, and uh, providing advisory services to the end users. Well, you know, that and that's brings up another question. This may be out of order, so I apologize ahead of time. But, you know, I'm thinking back over the last 32, 31, 32 years that I've been in this industry. And it seems like more recently than not, there's been a lot of disruption. There's, and, and you know, nothing happens fast in industrial automation because you make a large investment, you need it to work for 20, 30, or 40 years, mm -hmm. right? So sure. you can't say, well, we're going with the flavor of the month this month. Just doesn't, you know, you can do that with your cell phone, swap it out every year, but not with a capital project. It's that, a lot different from IT. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? And the costs of things are a lot different. And, and, uh, Although you know, the technology is becoming the same, you know, I we talk yeah. about IT and edge and cloud and everything. I mean, a lot of these IT technologies, and, and this has been the pattern in the industry, right? If there's a technology that's well established in IT, it's eventually going to get picked up by the OT and manufacturing. Um, you know, we saw that with, with the transition from Unix to Windows as an operating system that was happening when I first joined the company. Um, was that transition to Windows, right? Um, and the transition to Ethernet as a control network. And now we're seeing the transition to edge computing and cloud computing. Um, well, that's what I was going to say. It just seems like there's a lot more happening today than, say, 20, 30 years ago. It just seems yeah. like so much new technology is coming out that, and that people are finding in a way, innovative ways to integrate them into industrial automation. Like maybe 10 years ago, everybody was trying to integrate web pages into their products. But today with yeah, IIoT yeah. and IoT and just, uh, you know, cameras on everything. And, and, and just, security. And <laughs> security. Well, <laughs> could, yeah. this all creates a, a security uh, headache too, because trying to it does, connect yeah. everything to the, you know, like I like to tell my, my, my wife and friends, um, do you really want to be connected to all your enemies? <laughs> do you really yeah. want to connect your most prized possession up to, to let, just pick whatever the most evil spot in the universe is, they can connect to your device across the internet. So, um, yeah, security is huge. Security is huge. Um, and I'm really glad to be part of the cybersecurity team. Um, yeah, and you're right. Digital transformation, which is the umbrella term that we use for sure. this sort of massive, you know, influx of, of IoT and, and different IT technologies that are now coming into the world of industrial and manufacturing and so forth. Uh, we call it digital transformation. And it is, it's a lot more than, you know, th there's a lot more uh, migration of this technology into the world of OT and manufacturing than we've ever seen in the past. Um, you know, I, I remember when we debated for years about the merits of Ethernet, you know, and now it's like all this stuff happening at once. It's AI, mm -hmm. it's analytics and machine learning, it's cloud computing and edge computing and, you know, virtual networking and, and you know, virtualization. And, you know, it's this huge uh, cluster of different technologies that are finding their way into, you know, the OT world now. Now, I, I'm assuming, too, you guys are responsible when you're doing this research for you know, for disc discounting some of these pie in the sky ideas that will never happen and, and reinforcing, you know, a direction that looks feasible. I, I've heard some, I've yeah. heard some crazy things said, um, about industrial automation and it's like, I'm sure you guys get to put, you know, sort out the, the dreams from the brass tacks. What's, 
what's actually possible versus what is probably not going to happen in industrial automation. Do you run into that much? Sure we do. Uh, and that's one of the things our digital transformation team does in advising end users about, you know, if you're implementing, uh, if you're uh, embarking on a digital transformation project, rather, uh, where should you start? Mm -hmm. You know, do you start small? Uh, you know, how do you uh, get buy-in from the other people in your organization? You know, how do you make this project a success? Because uh, I guess if it's one thing I've seen over and over again, you know, over the years covering this industry, um, technology is great, but uh, you really, technology is an enabler, right? So you want to have some kind of business objectives in place. Uh, you want to have some kind of an idea what you're going to get out of this technology other than I just want to implement this cool new technology. Exactly. Um, which is what we saw, uh, I think in the early days of ERP, right? When people were going through SAP implementations without really knowing why or what they were going to do with it. Um, and so we're seeing I that today though, with IOT, in my opinion, we do see that today. I think today with people IOT. are a little bit more informed, you know, I think people are a little bit more discriminating about, you know, what kind of a result am I going to get out of this investment? You know, this better have some, some ROI and, and we better have some long-term business benefit or environmental benefit or sustainability benefit, whatever that might be. Um, you have to have those. But when you look at the expectations, cloud, metrics in place, you know, I, I don't know how many, uh, how many hot people higher up in companies have talked to me about, we're going to connect to the cloud and it's almost yeah. like we're going to get ERP. And it's like, what are you, what are you going to do with it? Are you, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah then we'll be able to do something with it. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, everything will magically be better if we just implement this new technology. Yeah. yeah. If you build it, they will come. It's not true. That is that is the wrong way to do business. You have to have, exactly. the, there has to be a reason, a driving force, a, I don't know, brass tacks for, for doing it before you do it. As most people in our industry know, on, you know, the mm -hmm. level-headed people who, who are, you know, can touch the plant floor, understand you don't do things because they're fun. No. And you have the installed base to deal with, right? So I, I know, you know, if you're in manufacturing, I mean, these systems, like you said before, you know, the average age of a DCS that's installed out there. We did some research on this a few years back. It's it's over 20 years old, Oh yeah. you know, um, anywhere from the neighborhood of, you know, 12 to 20, I think was, was what we determined. But uh, I mean, th this stuff, it sits there for a long time, you know, and it works for yeah. a long time. I mean, it's there for a long time because it works reliably for a long time. Um, so whatever you're implementing, you know, as far as new technology has to be compatible with what you already have. Um, and you, you, you can't just, you know, this industry is not an industry that just wholesale replaces everything, you know, all at once. Yeah. It just yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. And, and there, you know, those out there who are, in, you know, and, and not, not that there's anything wrong with that idea, but to assume that there'll be no control systems and the plants, it'll all be controlled by the cloud. I mean, even Facebook yeah. gets lock, locked out of their own buildings <laughs> mm -hmm. when they have a small glitch in the code. I mean, that's not that's manufacturing. Each each facility has to be able to run, um, you know, regardless of whether, you know, Time Warner has the cable system up and running or Spectrum. Yeah, or these are mission whatever. critical operations. Exactly. And, and in a lot of cases, safety is a primary consideration and you have volatile processes. And so, yeah, it's a lot of it is driven by safety. Yeah, safety is yeah, oh. job number one. Yeah. Absolutely. And safety and availability. So now, so you guys do all this research, so you you do a great job. You've been doing it for decades. Of this, I I, I could I'm assuming some of these companies, you know, they 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 contract you to do research. Like and there's a great quote from Dow on the screen. But do you do anything that the public has access to? So the average controls engineer who would be listening to this, what does Arc, does Arc have any role or any publications or or any type of symposiums or whatnot for the average controls engineer? Yeah, there's lots of stuff available on our website. Uh, if you go to www.arcweb, arcweb.com, there's a lot of free resources there. Um, we actually just published a report. Uh, called the Digital Transformation Top 25, um, oh, where we took the top 25 end users um, that, according to our uh, system of of measurement, uh, are at the top in terms of implementing digital transformation within their organizations. Um, and that includes names like Tesla and and uh, Intel and you know a bunch of different companies. I, sure. I could actually put that up on the screen too if you're interested in yeah, that. Yeah, if you have it handy. Um, 
Yeah, I do. That's, that, uh, that sounds that sounds like it would be something that would be highly interesting to this audience. Yeah, I'm just going to stop sharing for one second here, yeah. and I'll put that up. Um, but that is publicly available. Uh, so we do have a lot of free resources if you're interested. Um, just go to our website, and I'm going to pull up this DT Top 25. Now, I was not part of the team that that actually did this, but they have a really solid uh, methodology for determining who they put on this list um, based on our own research and publicly available information. Um so that's definitely something you want to check out and download. And, and while you're pulling that up, uh, let me ask this question. So a lot of our listeners are part of these very large um, companies like the Dow's, like the GP's. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just thinking after we go through this, maybe we can talk a little bit about, you know, what kind of problems are can solve for these large companies. But, and I know we kind of covered that, but like, what kind of things should the, the people listening, uh, you know, be, you know, what kind of solutions do you guys offer to those large companies that have engineering firms that, that you know, that they, they need some research done? So I want to get, so put a pin in that. Let's come back. Let's take a look at this. This okay. is your website. And this is the uh, Digital Transformation Top 25 Report. This is the DT Top 25. Um, and you can register here and download the report for free. You get a little snippet of what's in the report here. So you can see names like Duke Energy and Reliance and Dow and Unilever and Merck and J&J &J and so forth. Um, and this report will go into all the different aspects of how they're implementing their digital transformation programs and, you know, why we believe they are successful and our methodology for determining, you know, the companies that are on the list and so forth. So, uh, definitely recommend that. Yeah, we can definitely see automotive for the audio, uh, yeah. audio only audience. There's a group of automotives, there's a group of pharmaceuticals, there's a group of consumer products, yep. um, you know, um, farm equipment, networking companies, and so on. So it's a good mix. Of, yeah, we, we of cover the whole spectrum there. of automation, all the way from the most discrete industries like automotive and uh, farm equipment and stuff like that, all the <laughs> way through uh, hybrid industries and regulated industries like pharma and food and beverage. Uh, and then on the other end of the spectrum, we have the heavy process stuff, uh, you know, like refining and petrochem and mm -hmm. power gen and all that. So uh, I got another question for you, but before I get to that, back to, so I'm, I'm working as an, uh, a controls engineer, electrical engineer in a large company. Is When would I, what, what would be some good times for me to come to you and say, hey, I need to know more about this? I have a capital project. I want to make sure I make the right decisions. Where have you guys, mm -hmm. and, and I, I don't even know if this is a fair question or not, but I'll just throw it out there. Well, I would say if it's, if it's related to automation or production technology or supply chain, uh, okay, in yeah. any way, because we cover supply chain too, um, we could help you with it. Now that could be with selecting a product or selecting a system or an application or, you know, you got a short list of suppliers. Uh, we don't recommend specific suppliers. I just want to make that clear. I sure. mean, we never come out and say you should use company X. What we do is look at what your requirements are. Um, you know, and I've I participated in a bunch of these DCS uh, system selection projects, and that that can be you know a pretty intense exercise. Uh, if you're going over, you know, if you have a big new project on the horizon, you want to select a new system. You've had a system in place for say 15, 20 years. You may not be up to date as to what's going on in the marketplace right now. Um, so we've got in and done updates as far as this is where the market is right now. Here's the latest available technology. Here's where it's going. Um, if you have a supplier short list, we can go over their offerings with you. We can go over your overall list of selection criteria, um, you know, and narrow it down to a better list, you know, and we can provide waiting for that list if you want. Um, all of this is designed towards the final project right the selection and generating an rfi and all that kind of stuff uh we've helped out with uh we help out with small stuff too i mean the example i just gave is is a pretty big example of a big project you know where you're doing a big system selection um but we do small su stuff too you know if you're a small plant and you're, and you're looking for a new hmi or or you know, you're looking at trends in at the device level, or you're trying to select, you know, which device level network should I use? Um, you know, which safety system should I use? You know, what are the trends in uh, the regulatory environment? You know, pretty much anything I think we've done at some point. 
that makes sense. Uh, ad- advising the end user about, you know, and a lot of times it is, it's about the application of technology. It's about the intelligent application of technology to the world of manufacturing. Awesome. You know, I just had, um, where, as we branch out and we cover more and more industrial automation companies, um, to just to bring, you know, new and unique uh, content to our viewers and listeners, uh, along with the, 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 you know, the staples. Um, one uh, company we just recently had on, actually previously uh, had on, was uh, CodeSys. And uh, mm-hmm. that was kind of generated from the fact that IFM, who's been very good to us and sent us in samples, we've had hundreds of thousands of people view our videos on their products. They sent us in an HMI PLC combo device, which we covered, and um, but it ran on CodeSys. And, and I've always kind of heard from the edges. And so they came on the show and they it's a great show if anybody's missed that. But they had mentioned something about ARC. And I was like, oh, they didn't even know you were coming on. So um, apparently you have an event, um, an annual event. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Would you be prepared to uh, talk a little bit about that? Oh, sure. That's our annual industry forum um, that we have in Orlando every year. It's usually in February, but this year with uh, Omicron, we uh, postponed the event um, to uh, the week of June 6th. Um, Okay. And this, we attract over a thousand people to this event. Uh, it's a really good balance of end users and, and suppliers from the world of technology. We have presentations on everything from digital transformation to, uh, you know, cybersecurity and critical infrastructure and and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so again, if you go to arcweb.com, you can find more information out about the forum. But this this is. Uh, a lot of people tell me they value the networking at this event more than anything because of the people that we draw in. Um, it seems like you're you're bringing in not only vendors but also actual users. Engineers. A lot of end users. Yeah, half our attendees are end users and engineers easily. Okay. From all these companies that you see here, Georgia Pacific and Chevron and Dow and Exxon Mobil, uh, you know, you see all these people there. In addition to the ABBs and Siemens and Emersons and Honeywells and Rockwells of the world, mm-hmm. you will see all these people that you see on the screen right now. So I think it's that it's that intersection of suppliers and end users and even engineering companies and, and other companies all in one place that are also at a certain level, right? Yep. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for hands-on technical training like you do and you do a great job, that's that's probably not what you're going to find at the forum. You're going to find higher level stuff, although you will find really good case studies about the implementation of certain tech, you know, different technologies in manufacturing. Um, our, our presentations are set up so that you actually hear from the end users. Our presenters are end users. Um, so when you go to the keynote address, you'll see somebody from Dow, right, or DuPont or Dow DuPont, uh, you know, or, or, or uh, uh, you know, Suncor or ExxonMobil. That's who you're going to see presenting at the forum, uh, you know, along with representatives from supplier companies, too. But really, the spotlight is on the end users at this conference. Sure, sure. Uh, they are the primary presenters and, and the conference is totally focused towards the end user. Yeah, and I think the vendors probably help make it happen, and 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 you know, so they, they sure do. Yeah, yeah, they they provide sponsorships, and and uh, they provide us with a lot of support. And if you want to find out what the vendors are doing, it's a great place to go and find out because we have a technology exhibit too. Um, so you know, it's like I said, it's really both sides. Um, is what to me what makes it so great is both sides are very well represented. That's awesome. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to make sure we mentioned that because I know the CodeSys guys who were just on um, uh, were, were attending the plan, and I sound like they, they go every year. But um, kind of the, the, just to kind of look over what we covered, was there anything we wanted to talk about or you wanted to tell the audience about ARC, ARC, that we haven't covered yet? I know we covered a, just a wild range of topics. Yeah, it's a wide range. I, we could probably talk another hour about this. So <laughs> I think the best thing to do is go to the website, uh, find out about the forum. Um, you can participate in the forum too. I mean, if you're interested in, in doing a presentation, uh, our, our presenters and panelists attend for free. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say to your listeners, uh, if you have something worth sharing, uh, let us know. Uh, you can email me at L O B R I E N L O Brian, uh, at arcweb.com if you're interested, um, or go to our website and find out more there. But I think that's about all we have for, for this time frame today. Yeah. We've had some phenomenal uh, listeners uh, contribute to the automation in the past. And 
And uh, I think I think some of those folks would be phenomenal presenters. So you know, people actually in the in the field applying the 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 uh, the products. So um, if you're listening and you're one of those people, you know who you are. Give uh, Larry a give Larry a call or drop. I'm glad an to email, hear from you. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, Larry, I want to I want to really thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the Automation Podcast and really kind of introduce us all to ARC. Like I said, I'd seen, you know, ARC Advisory Group on a lot of research in my previous life. And so it's great to have you on. And uh, to anybody listening out there or watching, I'd love to get your feedback. If if you've uh, interfaced with ARC and have a story to tell, please feel free to comment on this uh, this podcast wherever you're listening to it from we're on so many platforms now but uh you can always of course comment on at the uh, automationblog.com we have a comment section over there as well but again larry thank you so much for coming on thanks for having me hope to come back again sometime well i hope you enjoyed that episode i want to thank larry for taking time out of his busy schedule to come on the podcast now if you're watching the video edition of the podcast please consider giving us a like and a sub and if you're listening to the audio only edition then please consider giving us a five-star review. And thank you to those who have already done so. I really appreciate it. You know, doing so really helps us find a larger audience as well as new vendors to come on the show. Now, if you'd like to follow me and maybe even buy me a cup of coffee, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. And of course, you'll always find all of my training courses over at the automationschool.com. With that said, I want to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends... Peace.